Welcome back, it's Rector, and I'm going to be playing some Twilight Princess today. In the last episode, these children asked if I wanted to show them how to use a sword. Basically, that's the game's way of telling me that I need to learn how to use a sword, but let's be 100% honest. Using a sword, the way it works is you just hit your button. Yeah. Easy peasy Japanesey. I don't know why the game even had to tell me that, obviously, ooh... You know, by pressing B. Oh, okay. I forgot that in this game, um, they actually, it wasn't this game that introduced it. It was, in fact, um, where you tilt forward while L targeting and press B to flex your muscles and stab. Alright, so we've got this. Um, and then, but we've also got a stab. Oh, they, okay. There we go. I forgot, so it wasn't in this game that they introduced the idea that you have. Um, uh, various shit. It was in. There we go. It wasn't in this game. It was in Wind Waker, where they introduced the idea that you have multiple kinds of slices, which I thought that was a weird idea to do before. Um, the thing happened. I thought it was kind of strange for them to do multiple different kinds of slices before motion controls were really a thing. And what's interesting is even when you play this game with the motion controls, the slices have nothing to do with the motion controls, so it doesn't even, like, make a difference. So it's like, why do they even do it for the Wii? And I think the sword training was required because, yep, now a monkey appeareth, and it heads into thine forest, and the children run. And I guess I gotta chase... yeah, the music is getting goofy, so I'm gonna have to wait. Oh, Colin's gonna be like, you can't go this way, you have to go, everyone went to the woods! Okay, yep. I was wondering if Colin was gonna be a little shithead or not. And guess what, the answer is yes. Colin was totally gonna be a little shithead. Dude, Colin is not a very good friend to the other kids anyway. He should, like, have run in after them and chased them, found out what the fudge was going on. Ooh. Now I can't, that I have a wooden sword, I can finally chop grass to get sweet, sweet roots. Whoa. Oh, dude. She's a good dodger. Look at that. Huh. Oh, see, when I do a forward strike, she, she's got nothing. She's got no ability to actually proper dodge. Dude, how did the gate become unlocked also? That's what I gotta wonder now is how on earth did the gate become unlocked? So, one thing I think I'll mention right now is when you're playing this game in a speedrun, um, the first thing you do in the game is you come straight for this gate and you do some weird ass trick to get through the gate and then you do this upcoming part of the game without actually having a sword and it's really really weird but I really have no idea how it all works and obviously I went and got a wood sword so not only do I not know how it works I don't care how it works oh look and there's a uh, Eponograss, if I want to call my horse, which I don't see any reason not to call my horse. Blow! I like how they give you the option also to not bring Epona. They're just like, yeah, if you want to not bring Epona, that's cool too. Although I do believe that I actually physically superbly need Epona. Because, yeah, I'm gonna have to... Well, either Bokoblins are going to attack me, or as I was about to say, I'm gonna have to jump over this gate. And truly, what did happen... Oh, shit. Why is this game so weird? Why can't you just dismount by pressing B? That's the dismount button. Alright, and there was a monkey. I just- I could've sworn I just heard a monkey out there somewhere. Dude, I wonder why the game doesn't let you climb that. Even though it's clearly a climbable thing. Oh, and this is worthless. This area is worthless to me. So, in this game, you can actually swim, like, uh, Zora style. Well, I'm not even sure if I know everything about this game. I, like I said, I remember there's like a suit that lets you swim in a pretty cool way, but I'm not gonna say I know what's going on with swimming because I don't actually know. But what we really need to worry about at this very moment in time. Ooh. All right, we got a couple. Cho okay, we're gonna take this choice. Although, oh, and this has the crazy guy who I guess isn't good enough to live in the village because, uh. He has different colored skin. The people in this game are awful. They won't let this guy live in the village just because his skin is a different color. They're horrible 
horrible people. Of course, this isn't my policy. This is the policy of the people who live in the game. But anyway, let's have a chit chat with him. I think he has an item for me. Whoa, an Ordonian. Hey, guy. Oh, yeah, the name of the village that I kept on saying I don't know the name of the village. It's Ordon Village. I'm sure you're, you should be wandering around the woods without a lantern just because it's daylight doesn't mean it's safe. There are a ton of caves and dank spots around here that get pretty dark even in the middle of the day. Here, go on. Take this. And I gotta say, in terms of Zelda items, this is probably one of the more boring items ever made in the Zelda universe. So, let's see here. Oh, that's not what I want to hit. Let us put on the lantern. Why can't I... You know what's really weird? Is I haven't been able to equip things to Z. I think all the Z triggers are broken on all of my controllers. Like, I kid you not. Um, whenever I go... In, like, you see the Z menu is sort of, like, um, blacked out there or whatever. It's not blacked out. It's just sort of, like, faded just to show that nothing's equipped to it. But... Oh, can I not just scoop on my own here? Oh, yes, I can. Oh, you can't. If you want to take it, you have to heat it to make it safe. Oh, okay. Oh, I gotcha. So the game is telling me I have to... There we go. Heating it, making it safe. That's right. See, it's on fire, guy. Yeah, use that lantern anytime you feel the need. And if it runs out of oil, you come see me to get it refilled. All right, well, hopefully I'm not going to have to do that ever. I, if I recall correctly, if you play decently well, you can, if you want some soup, feel free to have as much as you like, but I don't know if you'll like it, so don't blame me if you get sick, okay guy? Well, why would I eat that? That's lantern oil. Did he not just tell me that that's lantern oil? Oh, by the way, though, this is probably going to do something. In Zelda games, lighting lanterns always does things, so now I gotta know what it does, but I gotta remember to put the lantern away. So yeah, seriously There's definitely I think that you can make it through all the places you would possibly need to Use your oil over and over again as long as you're very careful about it as you use it But also I thought I was gonna get some sort of sweet reward for lighting the lanterns. I guess not What a jerk this guy doesn't even give you sweet sweet rewards for lighting his lantern. And, if I recall correctly, and it looks like I do. Yep. This game sort of makes the first area basically a dungeon. Like, there's a door, and you can't even get through it. And I think if you, oh nope, you can't swivel your camera around it. You totally need a key to get in there. So, we're already, oh wow, rock blocking this way, door blocking that way. Dude, I'm rock blocked. This guy's brocking my rock. All right, let's jump on my hizzity hiznass. Although, I think the game is going to force me to dismount my horse here in the near future because Epona, if I recall correctly, yeah, does not, does not enjoy this cave. So I'm gonna have to just, yep. Epona, why I hate you cave so, whoa. Did you see that sweet, sweet dismount that he has? Also, this would be great if I had real sword instead of fake sword. And whoa, what does this nut do? Obviously it must do something, ooh. You found a play wooden sword. It's Talos. All right, and oh, I can't bring the nut through the door with me. Okay, so here is where your uh, thing is intended for, but I got to make sure to keep putting it away just so I can save all the lantern oil. I'll never have to stop at that guy's place again. Luckily, see, you get all these. Oh shit! I thought that stayed lit. Did I not light it the first time? Whatever. Or maybe you have to light them all in a row or something to get them to stay lit. Although, it might actually appear pretty dark in here right now, so... Maybe, for the viewing pleasure, I should take my lantern out the whole time, but if I recall correctly, that's really not a specific requirement of me in this- Whoa! This guy tried to sneak up on me in the dark, though. That's not cool. Alright, let's pull the lantern out really quick, just for a second. Oh, and I have to have the lantern to get that thing to burn. Is there not a... another lantern spot around here? Okay, whatever. I guess there's not. Dude, this place isn't even that dark. Like, if I had a real metal sword, I could probably just... Oh, let's light this really quick and then fight this thing the real, the real way. Not the stupid dumb way, which is... The stupid dumb way of fighting that thing is not fighting it at all. Oh, shit. Man, these enemies in here 
are vicious if you're not cool enough to have a real sword, which obviously I'm not because everyone in the city is like, oh, he's just a young boy. We can't give him a real sword. We have to give him a wooden sword because he's not cool enough. Well, when I save the kids, they're surely going to think that I'm cool enough to have a real sword. Oh, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, cool. And I just noticed that... Oh. I need to burn those, I guess. And another place to burn things. The only thing I'm going to be burning is your expectations about whether or not you should give this kid a real sword. Because obviously I deserve it. I'm Link. I'm the Lunk. Alright, cool. Now we're back in the big part of Ferran Woods. Whoa. What are the big red dots on the map? Maybe that's where I'm supposed to be going. That could be a distinct possibility, or it could not be. Whoa. Also, I guess I... Oh, yeah, I just remembered. I come back here later with a different item in the game. I was like, this area seems to have a lot more going on for... Oh, shit! Whoa, this guy got me! He, like, held me in place for the one-two punch for this Bokoblin to come snatch you watching and attacking me. But, luckily, he failed miserably. Dude, that was seriously a terrifying event. I straight... I straight up thought that Bokoblin was gonna get me old school style, but he didn't have what it took, I guess, to hand me the sweet, sweet dish of justice. Whoa, how do you, what the fuck just happened? I don't even know how I'm supposed to get across that thing, but I'm surely either not supposed to be coming across, oh, you know what? This is for later. Like I said, you come back here later, although, whoa, I almost could have done that, whatever. Doesn't matter because I'm pretty sure that this area just kind of guides you directly to where you need to go. and You don't need to worry about all the little side stuff. All right, cool. Whoa! You are not going to hold me in place for another Bokoblin to slice me up into little Bokoblin chunks for Bokoblin soup that they probably are busy making in their Bokoblin caves. Dude, I, I should have grabbed that heart. I should also be very suspicious of this great land right now because clearly the kids just ran into the woods without suspecting anything, so... It is my suspicion that usually there's probably not Bokoblins in the area. So, I am learning so much about Ordon Village. Look at that. Legit chest. And look, they've also, though, they put the little decoy chest here, so you, like, open up the decoy chest. Oh, what? That's not even a, that's not even a decoy chest. That has a Farron Woods key. How is that a decoy chest? Well, this is better have something... What? Ooh. What? Five pieces? Dude, this is like the most cock -tease Zelda game ever. This is... If I remember correctly, and maybe I don't... I feel like this has to be the only Zelda game where you have to collect literally a million pieces. And by literally a million, I mean like four. Dude, I should just grab one of these. Look! These Bokoblins have... What? Okay, don't tell me every time I get a blue rupee. That is just... Seriously annoying if the game is gonna, like, every single time I get a blue ruby, it's like, Hey! Hey! Hey there, big guy! You got a blue rupee! In case you forgot already that blue rupees are five? I think it might be how it is in Skyward Sword, though, where every play session, it will tell me anew uh, what the value of each larger than one rupee is as I get it. But that is seriously... In Skyward Sword, if you remember, that was, like, the super annoying fuck feature where the game basically always was like, it would tell you every time you picked up one of the special items that would you use for crafting, it would seriously tell you every time you picked one up the first time in your play session, it would be like, hey, in case you've forgotten already, like, what the fuck these things are, well, they're still the crafting items that you know and love. You could easily go into your menu and check that what they do, but... Instead, we're gonna just, like, do this. And the thing about the blue rupees, okay. The, the, why that I've always thought the blue rupees is such a silly thing is because, is there another? I thought there was another Bokoblin over here. Ooh. Ooh, now you wanna buy something, hey? Oh, it's a bird. It's, oh, okay. At the bird shop, you can donate rupees and you can take one of these potions, but my bottle's filled with lantern oil and true champions don't need potions. That's actually not true. Sometimes even champions require pots, but I am feeling so champ right now that I think I may not even need pots. 
but whoa! Check it out. They confused Taylo, I think his name was. For some reason, the parents decided to name their child after a Pokemon. Yeah, they've detained Taylo with a monkey, and clearly, if I had, did not have a wooden sword, this would be a challenging battle. This is actually, I would say, I always tell people to like look up certain speedrunning things, but um, this would be something very interesting to look up in a speedrun because what happens at this part of the game, you have to defeat those enemies. Um, so what you do is you lure the enemies back to the bird, and then you try and, and the bird will attack the enemies for you, and that's how you do that part without the sword. But look at that! See, he knows the truth, that the monkeys aren't really bad monkeys. He knows that they're just actually also victims of the forest! But see, everyone else assumes that it's actually the monkeys that are bad. And ooh, finally! My son told me Taylor disappeared into the woods and had not returned. I came as soon as I had heard, but it looks like you brought him home already. I apologize. Such a task should not fall on you. Tell me, have you noticed how strange this wood seems lately? Anyway, Raktar, tomorrow is finally the day. You will be departing for Hyrule. I think it is a good thing I have given this task to you. Good luck, and return safely. If you are lucky, you may even get a, to meet Princess Zelda. Ah ha ha. So, oh yeah, I thought I would mention that too. Um... A few times already in this series, I've referred to Leela as Zelda, and I did so forgetting that um, Leela is definitely not Zelda. And in fact, the reason I kept on thinking Leela was Zelda was because I'm so used to Skyward Sword now, because that I've played Skyward Sword twice in a row with no other Zeldas in the middle. Oh no, I played possibly another Zelda, whatever. So anyways, I, I've played Skyward Sword, or whatever, and um, Skyward Sword kind of like got me used to the idea that, um, Skyward Sword got me used to the idea that Zelda is just like your friend who lives in the world with you. I forgot that in all the other Zelda games, Zelda is just some nameless face who the hero cares not even for. And look at this! Suddenly, there's more goats than there ever were before. Like, seriously, what has happened here? Before, there was like a total of. Like, oh, the, dude, look at this! See, there's always one goat. Thinks he's way better than the other goat. Thinks he can just do whatever he wants. Whoa! Whoa! I've never seen that happen before. I didn't know the goats got all totes pissed at you and. Hold some shit like that. Alright. This is gonna be like shooting fish in a barrel. There we go. Actually, that actually worked out really well. Now if I can just get the rest of these goats as well as that. See? Okay, okay. Link, turn it around. By the way, notice that this time there's 20 goats instead of 10. And this time you're being timed. Although, luckily it's not a timer counting down, so... Realistically, it's like, I guess you could just do your chores all day if you really wanted, and I feel as though, to top it all off, I did even better today. Come on, goat! I hate it when they get stuck up on the edge, because, yeah, there we go. You can't just... See, they will pretty, like, surely just run straight from you if you're straight behind them, but if they get stuck up on an edge, you basically have to, like, wedge up in between them and the edge. And lo, here we go! Final goat! In for the win! Alright, goats put away. Now my master of chores, stop bugging me and bothering me. Hey, that was 131 faster than usual. Well, what about wraps up for today? Y'all y'all head over to, to the mayor's place, okay? Alright, and with that, I'm gonna end this episode of Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess right here. And in the next episode, I'll be heading to the mayor's place. This has been Rakdar. Thank you for watching.